we hope that after die the soul will incarnation to another animal, the better animal, or maybe to be a human. So far in Bali, we've uncovered strange and bizarre culinary secrets few outsiders have seen before. This food, lawar, that we're gonna try, they use some raw blood and also raw pork meat. Oh, the meat is gonna be raw too? Yeah. And if I thought the last two days might prepare me for what I'm about to see next, <gasps> I was wrong. No! <laughs> what? In the east of Bali, locals partake in Hindu rituals and traditions today as they have for hundreds of years. Usually there are two kinds of ceremony, the ceremony for the god and the ceremony for ancestor. Including a ceremony that requires the sacrifice of a sacred animal. You eat this? Yes. Today I'm digging deep. When you were a kid, were you eating this food? Uh, the dragon play? Revealing undocumented Balinese food. She's got two! Can I pretend those are mine? And immersing myself in the culture. You're praying for the animal to come back at yeah. like a higher level. Higher level. Now, porcupine's one of your favorite animals, right? Yeah. What would be better? But first, breakfast. Another day, another adventure. Can you tell me about this restaurant? Where are we? We are in Klungkong. A 45-minute drive from Ubud will bring you here. Klung Kung Regency on Bali's east coast, where you can find the freshest tuna around. This is all tuna? Yeah, all of it. What is this called again? Pepes. Pepes, yes. I'm gonna try opening this up right now. You gotta unroll it, like a Tootsie Roll, and then reveal, oh, there it is. In Bali, you'll find a few cooking methods used over and over again, regardless of the protein type. Saute, basically meat on a stick. Oh. Loir, finely chopped meat and vegetables. Uh -huh. And pepes, meat cooked in a banana leaf wrapping. Here, our tuna is combined with tamarind, ginger, and local spices. When you break it in half, it's like they broke it apart and put it back together. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Bro. Oh. That's very nice. Ooh. It's like a chicken nugget of fish. It still has a great, like, meaty texture. I like it. Mm -hmm. What is this one? Sambal mata. Oh, it smells really good. This is like Balinese salsa right here. Yeah. I'm gonna just put that with my rice. Yeah. Get so, on there. Okay. So I've got some of our tuna on here, and then I'm gonna put it all in a spoon. Mmm. Bro. Yeah. Quiet. We're in nature. What are you doing? Thank you. Man, you should not be eating this fish alone. Like yeah. alone, it's like, oh, it's good fish. But when you mix it with this, it's somehow refreshing. oily and refreshing at the yes. same time. Oh man, that is a nice flavor combination. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We're halfway to our destination now. We're going from Ubud to where? Jungutai. Mm. There's, you can see the dragonfly catch and porcupine. And porcupine. Okay. Yeah, but what are we gonna eat? Dragonfly and porcupine. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Lee and I hit the road for another 45 minutes and end up in Jungutan. The perfect respite for those weary of swiping Instagram in the city. Here you can surf Facebook with a beautiful backdrop in a village of 8,000 around you. Mountains, jungles, fields, and some of the most unique food in Bali. First, a flying insect. Agung is here to tell me more. You grew up here. Yes. When you were a kid, were you eating this food? Yes, of course. That is one of uh, our favorite food. I've tried insects all over the Ooh, world. Holy oh. shit. Sago worms in Papua. Ah, smoky. Grasshoppers in Madagascar. <laughs> even water bugs in Thailand. <laughs> but never have I seen locals catch and cook dragonflies. This is the Dragon Lady. And what's her name though, for real? Komang. Komang. Ah, uh, hello Komang. He's got a couple items. The first one I see here, obviously the net. May I hold it? Oh, that's really long. Look how tall this is. <laughs> yeah, maybe four meters. <laughs> yeah, and then here, it's just kind of like a tennis racket, all stretched out with a bunch of uh, this latex on here. So the bugs, they just yes. kind of stick to it. Once she has a bug, what does she do next? Uh, she just uh, put the bugs to this, call it donkey. Donkey? Yeah, she cut the wing first. Oh, all right. <laughs> That's why they call her the dragon lady, guys.
I've gone rogue. A man on a mission by himself trying to get some dragonflies. First of all, your stance needs to be sneaky. Like this. Mmm, she's giving me a look. It's that what are you doing look. I look at my iPhone for about 12 hours a day. <laughs> I've got good vision here. I can't see him well on the grass. Oh, I see. Get in there! I missed it. This is more intense than you guys think. He's right there. <laughs> she just got a double kill. <laughs> oh, I see. I got it. Here we go. Yeah. I got him. Hey, not to show off, but check it out. What? You have like eight of them. Right now, she's putting all hers away. She caught about 10,000, I caught one, but I really jumped on it. Did you see that commitment? You ready with your don't go? <laughs> don't go? Huh, don't go? Donkey. Donkey, open up your donkey, here we go. I feel bad, I, I am gonna be ripping all your wings off and I'm sorry. Oh, they don't bite though, that's good. Wings off, sorry buddy, he's still alive, he's probably pissed. Put him in the donkey, and that, my friends, is how you catch dragonflies, amazing. You should do a master class on this, you're really good at it, huh? This is where we'll prepare tonight's feast, Samsara Bali, a restaurant where Balinese culture and traditions are preserved. The dish we're making today with the dragonflies, what do you call that? Yeah, we call pesan lengis misi capung. Yeah. Great. Pesan is the kind of food. Lengis is this one, made from coconut. And dragonfly uh, name it capung in Balinese. Okay, can we begin the of process? Course. Let's go. Do you want me to do something? I don't. Remember the tuna pepes? It's like a chicken nugget of fish. Well, now we're making dragonfly pepes, starting with local spices or bumbu, chilies, shallots, garlic, turmeric, salt, all mixed with talingus. Before you mix it, can I try some of this? Yeah. Can I use my finger? Or oh, yeah, I? of course. Yeah. After processing coconut oil, talingus is the foamy residue that remains. Oh, it smells good. <laughs> it smells like coconut. <laughs> Mm, kind of like a paste, a little sweet, mm -hmm. but like a little sour too. It's mm. kind of gluey, pasty. Right? Yeah, That's yeah, nice. Yeah. Oh, she's gonna mix them in there directly. Oh no, That's some of them are alive. <laughs> it's like Luke Skywalker being frozen in ice. Was that Luke or was that someone else? It's like Han Solo being frozen in coconut residue. Is that what happened? Oh, sorry guys. Does she feel great remorse for them? Yes. Yeah, I can feel that. She looks sad, but also kind of hungry. <laughs> <laughs> <A bit. laughs> the dragon lady takes a handful of buggy batter and piles it onto the banana leaf, then seals it shut with a bamboo stick. For some variety, she makes some dragonfly pepes with real bits of fresh honeycomb too. She said, next two weeks maybe they are already the larva of this uh, dragonfly. Oh, so, oh, yeah, oh, you oh, can oh, try oh, it. Oh. Soon, larva too, man. Yeah. Guys, we are not just eating dragonflies today or honeycomb. There's one more surprise in store. Yes. Um, they're gonna bring it out right now, right? Yes. All right, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Bali is a Hindu majority island. Hindu temples, statues, offerings, and worshipers can be found all throughout the island. Okay, yeah, yeah. got something. Oh, no, <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Today's ceremony requires one of the four sacred animals of this region. Porcupine actually is very special for our religion. We offer them to our God, especially for the big ceremony like Nantaglinge uh, or Atmawedana uh, Baligir. Deer, Pangolin and rhino are also sacred animals periodically used in sacrificial ceremonies. Do you have rhinos in Bali? Uh, no. 
Okay, but how did that even become part of a tradition? I'm told that in the case of the rhino, even a few drops of blood is sufficient in performing the ceremony. Even a little bit, it's still uh, very special for us. Yeah, to symbolize. Yeah. But where people in Bali are getting such blood remains a mystery to me. How did you get this one? Actually, this kind of porcupine is a lot here. Sometimes destroy the farmer plant. Mm. The farmer or people make a oh. hole yeah. and then it will trap. Hey, buddy. Hindus here believe in reincarnation. Creatures, whether animals or humans, die then come back in a different form. Traditionally, an elder will pray for the sacred animal in hopes that it may return as a higher form of being. We hope that after die and then the soul will incarnation to another animal, the better animal. You're praying for the animal to come back as yeah. like a higher level. Higher level. You know, porcupine's one of your favorite animals, right? Yeah. What would be, be better? To be a deer, to be a rhino, or maybe to be a human. The porcupine is doused in hot water and the quills removed. When it comes to this sacred animal, nothing goes to waste. The meat is sectioned into smaller portions. The feet are used to make oil. The skin is boiled in hot water. The organs are grilled. But in the meantime, we're gonna try out those pepes. Everybody's working together right now, cooking up the porcupine. It's a real team effort in there. Yes. While they're doing that, we're taking a brief respite and we're gonna try some of this food. Yes, this one is bee, this one is dragonfly. I think we work our way up to the bee. Yes. All right, here we go. Yes. Oh, what? Yes. There it is. We got it. What? That looks crazy. And you can see little colored specks and that is actually the dragonfly. There's a little char smell, mm -mm. some coconut. I don't know how to identify a dragonfly smell. <laughs> oh, look, there's like six legs sticking out. Is it gonna be crunchy? Yeah. Oh, there's a head. Did you see the head? All right, let's just go for it. <laughs> huh? Cheers. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Crunchy. Crunchy. Chunky. Man, that coconut tastes great. Oh, yeah. It's a little sweet and a little sour. It's got some nice solid body to it. It's very unique. Mm -hmm. But man, a dragonfly, look at this. What kind of food can you just pick out an entire bug like that? <laughs> <laughs> look at this one, it's red. <laughs> this is probably, it has a cure for cancer in there or something. I think so. Mm. Cool. Man, the dragonfly alone, it's sweet. It's a bit sweet. The only way you can make that better is if you also mix it with bees. Here it is. Yeah, it looks very similar. Wow, dude, look at the cross section and you can see the honeycomb in there. Let's try it out. Oh, very different. It tastes kind of earthy to me. A little jungle flavor. And I really like that coconut. You could put almost anything in that coconut and it would be pretty dang good. Yes. The one with just a dragonfly, a little bit more sweet. This is a little more earthy to me. But man, both super unique. Mm. That's, yeah, I'm kind of sorry. I'm a little blown away right now. Where are we? <laughs> What's going on? Did I just eat a dragonfly? Yeah. Okay. Preparation is underway right now. Everybody is manning their own little stations. Over here, all these organs kind of being roasted directly over the coals. This is gonna get chopped up and put into our loire very soon. The meat is mixed with bumbu. Half of the meat is used to make soup. The meat is getting completely broken down to its smallest form. By the time they're done, it's gonna be completely unrecognizable. You won't even know it was a porcupine. The other half of the meat will be used for saute. What I love about doing this is seeing how absolutely resourceful people are here. If you look around, fire made from coconut husks. The saute is on bamboo, and then they're using bamboo to create this whole structure to grill everything on. Everything is from the nature, guys. Next, porcupine lawar, a Balinese dish made of minced veggies and meat. But this time they're adding raw porcupine blood, then boiled porcupine skin, grilled heart and liver, fried bumbu, porcupine stock, and finally fried onions. Lee. Yeah. Well, hey there. <laughs> okay. You're behind me. Yeah. Waiting for eating. We have made a meal 
train, essentially. We call this way of eating is Megibung. It's ah. really special from our village, our regency in Karangasem. Megibung is a style of eating where men gather in a circle with their right side facing the table. The aim is to encourage togetherness. Well, I guess you're the beginning. Yes. Oh, wait, am so I the beginning? I <laughs> and you're the caboose, I think. I'm the engine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you lead from the back. Yeah. One person will take the lead by adding food to the middle of the rice. The others start eating, strictly using their right hands. Check this out, guys. Here's some saute. It looks like some dark meat or maybe pork. Oh my god, my first bite of porcupine. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, finally. Mm, what do you think? <laughs> it's mean. A little chewy, nice spices, not insanely spiced. It's hard though, I don't know. It's um, I need more. Ah. I need more. <laughs> <laughs> This is the boiled porcupine. <laughs> yes. I can't mix this with rice, there's so many bones. <laughs> yeah. Now, is it okay for this hand to help this hand? Mm, or actually, never? no. All right, one handed. Yes. Are you guys, I feel like you're all watching me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start okay, with this also. What are you gonna think? <laughs> I have better one. <laughs> oh! Look better, at this piece! Better. That is succulent. Can I have a different piece? Yeah. This is a cross section of a leg. You can see the skin on there. It's like giant pores almost. It's really good. Like a chicken, but a little yeah, bit sweet. Yeah. Yeah. For them, they're saying it's like chicken. It's a whole different thing for me. It's a little bit chicken, it's a little bit rat, and it's a little bit just something kind of funky that I've never had before. You can try the lawar now. Okay, it's yes. lawar time, guys. I mean, look at that. They put a bunch of blood in the lawar. Oh, and there's skin. Yeah, the skin. Man, this skin is so rubbery. There we go. Porcupine blood meat salad with skin, too. Let's try it out. Yes. Mmm, I am a lawar fan. Oh. <laughs> the skin is rubbery, but it's just like uh, any other kind of skin, like chicken skin or something like that. Well, it's a little thicker. I think closer to pork, yeah. Pork skin? Yeah, pork skin. For me, it just tastes a lot like tons of spices. Ton of wonderful lime, kind of citrus flavor, yes. fresh spices, ginger. There's not a huge amount of porcupine flavor, more like you just feel the porcupine essence. It's something new for sure. Mm. Yeah. When do you think you'll do this again? Every five years or every 10 years. This is really sacred. sacred. We don't do this every day or every week, every month, but depend on the ceremony, we will do this. I had always seen Bali as a tourist trap, an island getaway ideal for vegans and people who like to do yoga. After digging just a little deeper, I've discovered a hidden Bali, an island steeped in culture and tradition. Some of the most unique food I have ever seen, served up by some of the kindest, most hospitable people you will ever meet. There are thousands of beautiful, tropical, Instagrammable islands around the world, but Bali works not because of the rice terraces or the palm trees, but because of the people. From researching and shooting, to editing and mastering. Our 10-person best ever food review show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. Yes. Gentlemen, thank you so much for making today happen. What a unique, insane experience for me. I had a great time, thank you so much. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. A peace. Before you go, let me tell you about our new merchandise. It's a shirt that says balls, but it's so much more than that. It's an ode to the wonderful ball-shaped food found all across our ball-shaped globe. Balls, 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 balls. Balls. Get your ball shirt or sweatshirt today by clicking the link below. And be sure to check out our second channel, More Best Ever Food Review Show, for raw clips and deleted scenes that didn't make it into the show. <laughs>